you dicks. We got to move, guys. We got to move. We thought good to we start with a vibrant song. Because we're talking about millennials. We're speaking about I'm a 2000. So this is kind of like yeah, one of Coco vibes. Piano slash piano cintus, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just wanted to to have yeah, I wanna sit in gym. Pramisi energy because it's in the evening. It's about bedtime, so I'm like, I call. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We have to be alert because we're having an incredible conversation with Ul Sani Ravele. And we're talking about how do we navigate um, cultural identity and self discovery, really, as, as, as millennials, as Ama 2000, as whatever face of your life is. How do you navigate that? And how do you can come to a point of self-discovery, self-affirmation, self-validation? Because I think it's a it's an interesting engagement that we're going to have. And have your pen and paper because it's about to get rich. Guys, please don't send me a request because I'm going to do the requesting after here. After <clears throat> I'm done with Hulisani, then we can do the normal one. Thank you for I see the normal people are tuned in. So yeah, man. We are tuned in. Ah. Ah, go go one. No boo, I will sani. Nanendo takara. Yes, when I said no boo, I will sani rabele. I sounded so vendor. Like the accent, yes, in young kin to rabele. You know, I've actually found you that um, you were Chivenda. Chivenda is one of the most romantic languages. You go on, but you know, you know Chivenda is like a danga man. Then during the time we were just going, man, I didn't know. I thought the people were going to go and go. I didn't know what was going on. Yay! What do you have to say? Ulisani, don't convert me. I'm straight <laughs> as we speak. I'm very heterosexual. <laughs> don't move me. <laughs> Don't marinate me. Don't seduce me. Do not move your gogo. What the one I you know? Do I want to find the next day? We'll be this side. Just be. The spirit world i had to awaken to the truth of who i am that's the summary mm. of the song you know so what has been your journey so we're trying to navigate around our own our own cultural identity and uh, Outside being mupaid, it becomes quite difficult for one. Togozani, when Mkulum Kashur is on the decks, we got to move, guys. We got to move. We thought good to we start with a vibrant song because we're talking about millennials. We're speaking about Ama 2000. So this is kind of like, yeah, one of Coco vibes. Piano slash piano cintus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we we just wanted to to have yeah, I wanna sit in gym. Pramisi energy because it's in the evening. Abanyam time it's about bedtime, so I'm like I call. And I'm like no 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 no. We have to be alert because we're having an incredible conversation with Ul Sani Ravele, and we're talking about how do we navigate um cultural identity and self discovery really as 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 millennials as i'm a 2000 as whatever face of your life is how do you navigate that and how do you can come to a point of self-discovery self-affirmation self-validation because i think it's a it's an interesting engagement that we're going to have and have your pen and paper because it's about to get rich guys please don't send me a request because i'm going to do the requesting after here after <clears throat> I'm done with Hulisani, then we can do the normal one. Thank you for 
I see the normal people are tuned in. So yeah, man. We are tuned in. Ah. Ah, go go one. No boo, I will sign it. Nanendo Takara. Yes, when I said no boo, I will sign it, Ravel. I sounded so vendor. Like the accent, yes, in Yonki in Tonjungavele. You know, I've actually found you that you were with him. Chivenda is one of the most romantic languages. You go on, but you know, that's you know, Chivenda is like a danga man, and do need to come to touch Kwama. I need to do the poster and go on, 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 <laughs> don't move me. <laughs> don't marinate me. Don't seduce me. The love we are gogo. What the one I you know do I want to find the next day will be this side just because of what someone is saying. I'm telling you. <laughs> and you know it's an interesting conversation that we want to have because sometimes when we're trying to navigate around our own cultural identity and discover truly who we are, you know, outside what is 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 the norm, outside being and Mubenda outside being Mubedi it becomes quite difficult for ones because we do get swayed. Like, I mean, you almost kind of swinged me right there because I was like, you know? And I think it's 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 one of the things as 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 of this generation because sometimes it's really very difficult for us to stay grounded and to stay rooted. Sia Bonga wants to say hello. Hi, Sia <laughs> Senda. It's Inda. <laughs> like, you know. yeah. yeah so i think for me i mean a lot of people i i know you from your tv by the way yeah. i was your fan <laughs> on your tv okay hello baby i think this one is going to get famous one day the way i turn the camera on you see i know you from your tv we know you from or, or a big screens and 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 I saw somebody because I was going through your tweets, you know, your your tweets and just also your train of thought as a person. But I saw somebody says, "Guti, I'm 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 glad to see how grown up you are, you know, <laughs> into, into spirituality." Um, but I want to speak to why I wanted to have the conversation with you because it's something watching somebody on TV and knowing something about them there. But when mm -hmm. we worked together on the Castle Milk Stout campaign where they were asking us to do our clan names and all sorts of things. Um, yeah, oh, and, and, and I found that you have some really rich insights and how you were able to dissect issues of identity and spirituality, and especially as somebody who grew up Christian, who grew up mm. religious. And then you went on to become an advocate of, of, of your, your cultural identity. You owned being Movenda, whereas sometimes that gets, you can easily also be alienated by your peers, you know, when you start yeah. moving away from what is, is, is com or, or what is trending or what is seen, you positioned yourself and we started to know that, Nana, you're going to, it's about, yeah, go back. Because I'm, I'm worried that Sia will run and crash the screen right now. So no I want to speak to you about your own journey, your own journey of self-discovery and how how you were led in owning yourself as a, a movenda as a vendor a vendor woman so what 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 triggered it because i'll tell you why i want us to begin the song i was singing right now it says that um i've experienced so many hardships in the spirit world i had to awaken to the truth of who i am that's the summary mm. of the song you know so what has been your journey so it's it's Firstly, Koko, thank you for, for the opportunity and for the conversation. You know, uh, the past week or so, I've been tuning into never seen me talking about more of it, more of it, more of it. The band has been insightful. It's been mind-blowing sometimes because you sit afterwards and you're just like, hey! What just happened in this conversation? And so to have the opportunity to be a part of that and to be a part of important conversations that we need to be having, not only yeah. as young South Africans, but just as a people, as a black people, um, is really awesome. So thank you for that. It, it, it's, 
it's great that you mentioned the Castle Milk Stout campaign because for me, that's when the change happened. So um, the the Castle Milk Stout campaign, for those that don't know, I think it was about a year and a half ago, Goko, ne? Two year, a year and a yeah, half it ago. Was, it was, no, it was September last year. Last year, ne? But obviously, yeah. the conversation begins earlier on in the year for a campaign yes. that's going to happen, right? And so yeah. uh, what the campaign was about was really celebrating um, culture, but in a form of a campaign that they had around. Oh, yeah, there were two parts of the campaign. Yes. So last year was the Clan Beats one, which is when they did the whole album with Maporisa. But the year... Young people, or a lot of us millennials, and I'm a 2000, we can that's where i'm like it was a year and a half ago so castle start wanted to do this can and they wanted to put is tagazelo of different people on the can and they approached me and they're like we'd like you to represent wavenda and i was just like um i'm excited i would love to do this campaign but which means that i am of royal lineage and this surname of ravere doesn't just belong to me and mm. i can't just okay it I must go to Ayani Musanda, to the royal family, and ask and seek their approval hey. of this campaign before I'm a part of it. And so that was the journey that began for me in 2018, around, I think it was June, August, where I then asked my aunt and I said, Makadzi, this is what's happening. Because also, I'm a child, you know, I'm a child who's a... Not, never been taken Musanda as an adult so maybe I was there as a baby but I've never been there myself as an adult and so I went through my aunt because that's the correct thing to do you know to say Makadzi please can you ask for permission this is what I'm coming to ask for can you be the one that leads the way to take me Musanda to see the royal family and to see the chief and to tell them about this and so we went um, Sanda Ravere Maruma and yo Coco you know when something happens to you I don't know how to explain it. Um, something happened to me in that whole process where firstly, there was a, a ceremony of sorts that they did there where Nosa Zina, so essentially directly translated as like Ikamalam Lasha, like they, they burnt my name and gave me a new name. Mm. And that is where the name Muofe comes from. So if you've ever seen me talking about Muofe, Muofe, or Muofe, the bag, it was a name that I was given by the royal family and by the chief himself. And Muofe is the one to be feared. Mm. And when that began in me, uh, there was a longing that was like, you know, I'm, I'm about to embark on this journey of being a part of this campaign, but I don't know anything. What our cultural practices are, what do we do, what do we not do, why do we do it, why don't we do it? And so that is where the, the, the spark was for me. Um, mm. I ended up not being a part of that campaign <laughs> uh, from a contractual perspective, but I understood the purpose of it. The purpose of that campaign coming to me was my awakening. It was my girl. I want you to know more about them and not necessarily in, in the sense of going on a journey. Because I think for a lot of us young people or a lot of us millennials and I'm a 2000, we feel or understand that when someone is called by their ancestors, it's a calling. Like you must go and be a sangom and whatnot. And sometimes it's not that. It's just mm. a, hey girl, we just want to have a relationship with you. We just want to talk to you. We just, we want to be your homies. We want to be there with you, you know? And so that's when uh, my family, Aravere, prepared a book for me that had a whole um, explanation of our family history and the kings that had come before and what Itaga Zelo said to actually is and things like that. And it felt amazing to then be able to go into spaces and you're like, and then the and the and the and the and the you know, to be able to say that. Goosebumps, like I'm having goosebumps all over my body. <laughs> 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 ah, 
and oh. and and that was exciting for me Coco that to me was just like I'm going to learn these things I'm going to I'm going to make a conscious effort to learn more and I practiced it I would write it down because I saw it in the book I'd write it down so that I'd be able to memorize it and at first I used to be able to say it with a piece of paper reading it but now I can just sit and go out there and say it um w- without any help and I find that that's that's the that's the longing that that we have as as millennials as young people that we know ourselves i think a lot of us can be confident in the the modern world you know how to navigate you know islumo but for a lot of us ta kulele kazi you know we grew up in the city where cultural norms cultural practices that knowledge is not even passed on to us it's not even a discussion in the house you know mm. and so we find ourselves in this in between space where you want to learn more but you don't know who to ask and when you do start asking questions the older generation bagmangalela or they start questioning what's wrong with you what are you going through that you now all of a sudden are asking questions about your grandfather's father and who comes after this one and you're starting to draw this family tree because you're trying to have that understanding for yourself right yeah. and after that that castle milk stout campaign what then happened was i was at after and i think that was no after was before so for the longest time i have been wanting to do a documentary about learning about myself and learning about my culture because of this fact that ngakulele kasi ngakulele shawela soweto and i don't know cultural anything from so yes ndimo venda and i'm very proud of that um i've never shied away from my culture our language but there's no practices that i know of that i say i know that when we do this when someone dies we do that because this is why we do it and what not i never had any knowledge of that and so i did a documentary i was part of a documentary when i was at after where the third years were doing this whole thing about going on a journey and they asked me to be the star of the documentary and we went to venda and um i met with a chief from um one of the the royal families and not my own royal family just to understand like you know the role of a woman the role of girls in the culture and what not and there was this point where i go and i interview a lady who teaches young girls about with the faram sidzana wa mvenda so how to carry yourself as a young woman and in my interviewing of her i cried like i cried is kalo is mhlungu because i said to her you know ma i look at these young girls and all these things that they know about their culture and what they can do and i feel as though i'm not enough mm-hmm. i feel as though there is something in me a short die because i don't know these things mm-hmm. i feel like i nya short that because i never went through the cultural practices and the what not you know of transferring from being a young girl to being a woman and that cry and that release i think was uh uh almost an mostati uh, moto for my ancestors to start that realm of communication because it's like okay she wants to learn more she wants to know more and she's keen to do it and then castle milk start comes and then last year i meet you and we're a part of this campaign and so i i i strongly believe that it's up to us goko as young people to be inquisitive yeah. to ask the questions that we are wondering about because if you don't do it nobody's going to bring it to you we have a syllabus at school where we learn about you know jan van rieweg and we learn about south african history and what not but there's nobody teaching us about our cultures there's nobody mm. teaching us about sipumapi why do we do the things that we do within our different things and if you as a young person don't take that responsibility and that onus upon yourself it's not going to happen so that's where my journey of wanting to learn more about myself began Wow, that's a very interesting story. I think for me it goes to show that I always say to people that sometimes some of us go to initiation schools literally so twice a week because we need to be reminded of who we are because our own families and our own parents have lost their pathways so we are the gen-
lost their pathways. So we are the generation that is going to help our own families return to those pathways. Because I'm also sure that, you know, that journey was not yours alone because you involved your aunt and you had to go back and they had to go back and, and identify themselves because we can get so caught up in the modern world, but the modern that's Western because African, African culture evolves. You know, and yeah. this I'm going to have about, I'm going to have a conversation with Ubabumbu Sokos about the involvement of culture. But our yeah. own way of evolving, it's also feeling like we need to fit in within the Western spectrums in order for mm -hmm. us to look as evolved. I think it's also courageous because we need to understand what colonization did to us. It, 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 it fragmented us and, yeah. and, and placed us under class as well amongst mm -hmm. black people. So we've always known that the people from the North we're sitting at the bottom of the pyramid in terms yeah. of, of hierarchy of, of black people. And I, um, I connect to Eva Venda because uh, uh, my mother, Kimu Lobedu, and Balobedu separated from Bavenda. Uh, and yeah. So we, we moved away and we came further up when the Venda stayed there. But we are from the same lineage of Bagalanga. Because I'm yeah. sure in your, in your lineage, uh, every Venda person, when they yeah so it's 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 um it's it's those things and 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 when we trace our culture and even when we say it's tagazelo we are actually showing our interconnectedness to to our our ancestors but our interconnectedness as well as a race because when i understood bakaranga and i understood it, oh okay maybe that's why because i wore these i wore magunda before i even became a sangoma but i found attraction to them right and i i i, I got a few and i had to actually go a uh, uh, um, to Venda and sit uh, with an right old woman making it like she would yeah. make she made half of what I'm wearing was handmade while I sat there and waited and just sitting in there I was at awe of how much goes into our cultural practices because you uh, it's an old woman who can these are sacred they're not fashion statements yeah. they look fashionable so I don't wear a lot of beads and I take beads on and off but I can never take these yeah. Because these play a significant role for me as a traditional healer. They connect me to my Karanga lineage. They connect me to the medicine uh, women and men that worked in my culture. So I want mm. to find out what are the things that you would have looked as cultural expression before you went into the journey that when you immense yourself into them, you understood that there was depth and sacredness around it without, of course, right. telling us this. You know, they, 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 I don't say secrets because secrecy is protecting someone. Yeah. But sacredness is protecting the collective, you know? Yeah. But the yeah. sacredness of, of uh, 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 like, what did you learn? What did you learn about certain things? What did you learn about what you wear? Uh, uh, what did you learn about wearing this? Because you rock your gears quite well, hey? You make <laughs> them look good. So before I talk about those symbols, I think you've touched on something so important when you always talk about colonization and its role that it played in in where we are as a people and yeah. i often find that as a young generation we put a lot of blame on our parents to say yeah you know the older generation didn't teach us and yeah. i always want to play devil's advocate in that i think it's important for us as young people to understand that the time in which our parents grew up in was a time where firstly we were separated on a cultural level. You need to go back to the Native Land Act of 1913. You need to go back to things like the Group Areas Act of 1950. And you also need to go back to understanding what apartheid actually was, over and beyond. So first it was colonization. Then there was the level of apartheid, which apartheid for me, you know, I'm not a scholar. I'm not anything on that level. But my understanding of apartheid is that it was psychological warfare that manifested itself in the physical realm and manifested itself physically in the laws that separated us, us as a people. And you need to then ask yourself, why separate a people? Mm -hmm. And that is going back to the simple rule of, if you want to conquer, you must divide. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Why? Because in separation and in isolation, that's where ignorance breeds. And wow. that's where and why we find ourselves at a point where we have things like tribalism because we're so busy fighting each other that we can no longer come together in what makes us the same. And there is so much that makes us the same. 
and that we cannot come together and fight a common enemy because we're too busy fighting each other right mm. so that's one thing then there's the element of understanding that our practices as a people our languages even our our way of life was demonized mm. by things like colonialism and apartheid and so when you look at your parents and you say but my parents never taught me i i think a part of it comes from the fact that they were also living through a time that said you cannot do these things and so when for a long time somebody keeps telling you one thing that you can't do this you can't do this you'll be arrested for this you'll be you know what i mean you also mm. get to the point where you suppress it and mm. so you don't talk about it because why if you talk about it you want a hippo to now show up in your streets and start arresting you all Mm. and something like and something like that happening to you and so i don't think that it's a case of our parents also didn't know it was also coming from a place of fear and it's important for us to empathize with that side of what did you learn about certain things what they also couldn't they were fearful and even now complexity and the imp- okay you're back uh yeah. thing- what's happening there why did they this cuz you've always been it but now you actually that choose to be evil but in the mm-hmm. thing that you want me to do that choose to be you actually be why did they call her by the way impact of colonizers come back asking questions you rock your kias quite well hey you make <laughs> them look good so before i talk about those symbols i think you've touched on something so important when you always talk about colonization and it's as a people is it safe you know what i mean mm-hmm. i call you need a college in term when i call you and say mm-hmm. and in where we are as a people and yeah. i often find that as a young generation we put a lot of blame on our parents to say yeah you know the older generation didn't teach us and yeah. i always want to play devil's advocate in that i think it's important for us as young people to understand that the time in which our parents grew up in was a time where firstly we were separated on a cultural level you need to go back to the native land act of 1913 you need to go back to things like the group areas act of 1950 and you also need to go back to understanding what apartheid actually was over and beyond so first there was colonization then there was the level of apartheid which apartheid for me you know i'm not a scholar i'm not anything on that level but my understanding of apartheid is that it was psychological warfare that manifested itself in a physical realm and manifested itself physically in the laws that separated us as as a people and you need to then ask yourself why separate a people mm-hmm. and that is going back to the simple rule of if you want to conquer you must divide yeah. divide and conquer why because in separation and in isolation that's where ignorance breeds and wow. that's where and why we find ourselves at a point where we have things like tribalism because we're so busy fighting each other that we can no longer come together in what makes us the same and there is so much that makes us the same and that we cannot come together and fight a common enemy because we're too busy fighting each other right mm. so that's one thing then there's the element of understanding that our practices as a people our i i am going on this journey so that i can this even our our way of life was demonized mm. by things like colonialism and apartheid and so when you look at your parents and you say but my parents never taught me i i think a part of it comes from the fact that they were also living through a time that said you cannot do these things and so when for a long time somebody keeps telling you one thing that you can't do this you can't do this you'll be arrested for this you'll be you know what i mean you also mm. get to the point where you suppress it and mm. so you don't talk about it because why if you talk about it you want a hippo to now show up in your streets and start arresting you all mm. and something like and something like that happening to you and so I don't think that it's a case of our parents also didn't know it was also coming from a place of fear and it's important for us to empathize with that side of they also couldn't they were fearful and even now as a young person when you come back asking questions their minds first need to go through a process of wait is it okay for her to be asking those questions and exploring that side of life 
because of where we are politically as a people is it safe do you know what i mean mm-hmm. and it it it's it's critical for us to understand that i don't always blame our parents for yeah how about a ruta yeah they never passed it down to us in 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 and it's also a twofold thing cuz now you must understand our great our grandparents and our great great grandparents that came before that that it can also be a legit case that your parents don't know because you cannot teach what you don't know you yeah. just can't and so if it wasn't passed down to them they have no clue of how to pass it down to you because they too were growing up during a time where they couldn't be having these conversations and so let's be understanding and empathetic when we start going on these journeys of self discovery and asking our parents questions and knowing that sometimes they don't come against you from a place of they they like against it and they think it's evil it's really just a a case of needing to first adjust their minds and their thinking to where we are now i strongly do agree with the other side of it that says they they are so within their religion and the what not that anything that you say about wanting to go on a journey of self discovery and culture i know kisatanism i mean i had someone in my own family saying um they saw me praying with a candle once and they said yeah holy sana jano o o busy libadimu yeah she she is this 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 and i was just like it's cool fam it's cool and i just stopped talking to that person i just removed myself from that family structure wow. and from that thing because that's what it's going to take you know you're going to meet some people in your family or in your circles that are just like and then we don't do these things of ancestors we don't do what 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 and it's fine you know if you don't do them you don't do them and i i am going on this journey so that i can understand it for myself and i can make up my own decision it doesn't mean that i have lost um my connection with god because also i find that we are so quick to criticize things that we don't understand You are so quick to criticize in bed but it's fine you can walk into the spa and they're burning incense and you feel relaxed and you feel that there's positive vibes it's the same yeah. thing Yeah You know you what know, I say you... I say well, son, I want to I, I want to just add and then you can continue I say to people we all believe in ancestors it's just that some of us don't believe in our own because every yes. religion is about a lineage of ancestry because the people we read about the people we we pray to do not exist in the physical world they exist in the spirit world so when we call upon them we are calling an army of ancestors but not just our own which for mm. me goes to the point of the complexity and the impact of colonization plus apartheid that it did on our or, or on our identity because that's the to be denying yeah. yourself of a bloodline that you are connected to because the minute i call you uh, 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 when i call you and say eh uh, maravel i am calling not only you i am calling But all of those people you are walking with right so if i'm saying i don't believe in these people i should change my surname to smith or something else you know <laughs> or someone's name somewhere else because that's a fact because yeah. the fact that you are you are called by that that surname because the surname is an identity uh, identity card so that identity yeah. card comes with other identities and other entities that might not exist in the physical world but exist in the spirit world so we all do believe in ancestors it's just some of us just feel like other ancestors are more the way than our own you know how i explain it gogo i in a simple manner when somebody and and look we'll call it what it is because this is a frank conversation it is usually people of the christian faith that are very quick to demonize everything that is not christian So yeah. you'll find yourself sitting in church and this is something I don't subscribe to and I switch off when a pastor starts preaching like this I switch off where they will say yeah mara who has muhammad saved who has he raised from the dead and it's like guys if we're talking about god god is great all by himself he does not need comparison to anything and anyone else and so there's no need to be pulling other people's beliefs down just so that you can amplify god that's not how i understand god to be the other way i explain it is that if you don't believe in ancestors i say do you believe that you're a descendant of abraham and they say yes i'm like okay so if you're a descendant of abraham what is abraham to you <laughs> is the answer not ancestor and so how i explain my relationship with my ancestors is that yes i believe that i am a child of god 
But my ancestors that I knew, my grand that lived, my grandfather, my father who died, those are my direct connection to the power that is above. And that is how I make sense of it. And that's where I put the two worlds together for myself, you know? Uh, so it, 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 it's a, it can be a lonely path to walk, but what I'm very grateful for is that my siblings are very supportive. My mom is supportive. So we have these conversations and nobody's like, eh, what's going on here? And now, you know, you're no longer the person that we understand. So it, it's exciting, but it can be a very lonely journey. You that if your wheel is doing this, okay, you're back. Uh, the <laughs> thing I've learned along the way has really been a Makazi Florence Maseba is one person that I really have to put up there for myself in terms of being a guiding light, in terms of knowledge, in terms of just always being there to hear and understand and to impart her knowledge and a rich knowledge that she has, not just of the Chivenda culture, but of a lot of cultures under. Uh, and a general, like if if you follow Makazi Florence, you know she's a wealth of information, right? And I've learned things like, first of all, you know the picture that you posted, and I'm wearing the if you mini. Ah, why is the word leaving me in Gachivenda? Somebody will post it here. You'll remind me. I can't remember the word. Uh, uh, as a child of a royal family of royal lineage, I learned that I'm not supposed to wear that. Wow. Right. But who would have known? Mm. Uh, I've learned that there are different colors yamingwenda that people wear. So, and that there are different, um, if you mean, eh, I'm still learning the words, but you know how it's sewn? It's different for different families. Oh, butabero, yes. It's different for haravere, hachibase. It's all different. And the beads that we wear, Vukunda, I learned that there are certain ones that married people wear and certain ones that you shouldn't be wearing because you're still ichi ichi, essentially. And therefore, you shouldn't be wearing it at all. That there are certain colors you mustn't be wearing because you're married and you're not. But we don't know these things. We just throw on. We're going to a wedding and we're just like, okay, here we go. And so, it, 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 it's... It, it's up to you and I, it's up to ourselves to go there and ask the questions. Because if you don't ask the questions, you're not ever going to know and understand. So I'm just really at the beginning of this journey, but um, I'm excited about the things that are going to unfold and the things that I'm going to, to learn about not only myself, but uh, about my culture as well, because I've always believed that, again, you can't teach what you don't know. And I'm doing this not only for myself, but for the fact that I'm going to have children down the line. And I don't want to be teaching my children that, we're going to be doing Thanksgiving where we sit around the table, 37 colors, fair tandas, and the pela. I must understand if we're going to slaughter, we're going to slaughter. Why are we slaughtering? What are we slaughtering? How do we slaughter? What do we need to do after we have slaughtered? You know, things like that, which a lot doesn't happen because, again, we're in the townships, we're in the suburbs. So some of the cultural practices do happen, but they water down and nobody explains it to you. Bye, yeah, and Tanje. And when you must just be the young person that comes and cleans up and does afterwards, but you need to be the inquisitive one that says, Malume, what's happening there? Why did they call her by that name? What does this mean? Why does that happen? You know? Um, so that's where I'm at right now. And I think it's also to understand, I think like you touched, there's also a time and a place to be asking for certain things because there are different roles in which we occupy during cultural practices require us to not only be present as the, the, the human beings, but to invite the spirit that is leading us in, in performing those rituals. Because yeah. rituals are quite sacred and are what connects us to our ancestors. So you can't be that Malume is busy. We are partial, are partial ring. But Malume, why did we just say that? You know, <laughs> also, we need to understand because it's, I think it's falsely to believe that this generation... Um, is more inquisitive than previous generations. A revolution has always been led by the new generation. I mean, we look at what 1976, for example, because it's always the young people who are saying the system as it is is not serving us. 
So I think mm. as young people and these conversations we're having, I'm just so inspired by your knowledge and your richness because I've seen you on my streams and how you also quote us back and things like that. And I hope somebody's quoting you back because this is powerful. Afterwards, yeah. You know? This is powerful. I mean, the CC we know from UTV, or Jubilant and Bubbly, it still <laughs> is, but so enriched because of a journey she had to take. And sometimes journeys are expensive. You know, Ulisani, you, and, and I know that you lost the first contract with Castle because of contractual uh, issues, but it was also your ancestor saying that you are on a journey and money might distract you. Yeah. These resources might take you away because you might have done it the first time around just for the sake of the contract. So Rosie said to you, hold up. We didn't bring this contract to you because we wanted you to have income. We wanted you to have deep richness. We wanted yeah. you to awaken to the truth of your identity. You understand? Uh, and I wanted to say as Mufumagazi, right? But that's hey, woman. Hey. But you are a woman, you know? Mm. We wanted you to, to, to have that. And it went, but to show that it came back again. You know, the following year you were, but with much more richness and, and, and groundedness because yeah. we can easily be swayed away by things. So I want to, to, to speak because it is a reality only signing for a lot of people who are trying to own themselves in their own identities around issues of Bazimu and around other issues. When people start to say, uh -uh, when Ukaru, you are becoming a Sangoma, deals might start to fall off, you know, because yeah. it might not align with their Christian brand. So I want to understand what are the, some of the challenges you experienced because you spoke about your family, but in the workspace, what are some of those challenges when you started to come out and say, I'm doing this, I am this, because you've always been it. But now you actually be it, you know? It's always been in here, but you are in, you embracing yeah. it externally as well. And so how did you work around those things? So the challenges have really been that, where people are just like, how, Batung? But we know you as a Christian, you're a person that goes to church. So even when you start, it, it happens not even like in the workspace. It will happen in social media because my workspace is everywhere I go, right? Because of the career that I have. And so when I just even tweet something that a Coco tweeted, whichever Coco, or I respond, or I ask a hey, Coco, when you pass at 3 a.m., you know, are we passing at 12 or whatnot? And then people will be like, how, can't you run out of my reggae? And you're just like, it, 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 for me, how I've dealt with it is understanding that people, or especially black people, we have been conditioned into a thinking that it must be this or that. And that we cannot be in a space where we do this and that. And by bringing the two together, we actually amplify the experience that we're having, not only on a spiritual level, but on a living this life journey level. And so I, I've always been surrounded by people and I, and I have to really like, my friends have been amazing because they don't judge. They just, very interested as well. They're just like, okay, so what does the white candle mean? Okay, so do you dream? Okay, so what happened? And I'm just like, hey man, I don't know what's happening. It is what it is. I'm just learning more about my people and I'm taking it one day at a time. You know, it, it, it's that thing again of just because you start having a relationship with your ancestors doesn't mean that you are necessarily going to be called to heal others. Sometimes you just have to heal yourself. Sometimes that is exactly why they bring you closer to themselves so that they can reveal things about you to you and reveal things to you about the people around you as well. Because that's the other thing, you know, when you remember when you were growing up and they would say, next door. you know, and it's like, that's because they knew, they knew what was happening in those homes or whatnot, you know, and they would And if somebody could just sit down and explain to you that, listen, in this world, there are good forces and there are evil forces. Mm. They are in the same way that a, a, a doctor can, you know, a doctor can actually kill you. They just choose mm. not to. Mm. And so I find that I've walked into the space of wanting to learn more, setting aside that judgment of, you know, we've been conditioned to think that Like that judgment of you know we've been conditioned to think that our ancestors sangomas 
uh, anything to do with uh, a imiti is evil because I understand that, no, there are just some women that choose to be evil. But in the mm. same way that a doctor can choose to be evil and kill you, they just don't. And so it's like they've been washed with this one blanket, you know, and they've been painted with this one color that when you speak about Isangoma, it's evil. When you mm. talk about Imiti, you know, Muti is it's medicine. Like that, that's the translation of the word, medicine. But in our minds, when you hear Muti, you just think witchcraft. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. And how I've navigated the challenges of people casting judgment upon me, like, you know, believing in my ancestors and believing in God. It's just that it's fine. I don't need you to understand it. I'm on a journey for myself. I'm on a journey for my future descendants so that we have a stronger knowledge of understanding who we are and where it is that we're going. And I must say, my ancestors are rewarding me for that. You know, you get to places and spaces where something doesn't happen for you and you can accept so much easier, not only because now I walk with the biblical and spiritual understanding of the word that says everything has a season and it's time, but now I can marry it with this relationship that I'm having with my ancestors and it just amplifies the experience of being like, okay, I get it, guys. You didn't want me to have that. And also understanding that, you know, when you start thinking about God and Christianity and whatnot, always they make God such a fearful concept. Like, he's there and you're here and you could never be that. But the Bible even talks about how God is a reflection of you, which means greatness is, is within you, which means that light is within you, which means all of us are light workers in some way, shape or form. And so when I put these two worlds together, I always pray first. Mm. You know, it doesn't mean that I've let go of a, my first thing is, you know, like that is my entry point before I even start calling anybody's surname and any grandparents that lived before me. And I, I, that's how I bring the two worlds together. So I don't need um, the validation of others, but it is true that you will face uh, what is it called? You will face animosity. You will face misunderstanding. But it's also important to understand that sometimes that misunderstanding and that animosity and that not wanting to, not wanting you to know comes from a place where they know if you awaken, you're going to tap into a higher power of yourself that they don't want you to tap into. And that can happen within your own family. Wow. Wow. It can. It can. That's deep. It can. That's very and deep. So, yeah, and so it, 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 it's, it's, you, you need to make it make sense for you within the two worlds that you bring together. So if you want to leave your religion behind completely, that's a choice that you need to make for you. But for me, in everything that I pray about, I'm just like, please help me understand. And I always say to my ancestors, guys, me, I grew up in church and I want to stay in church. So whatever it is that you want me to do, please, can I still go to church? Can I still, you know, do the things that I like? Can I still sing my praise and worship? Because that makes me happy and that fulfills me and that grounds me. And so you'll go through things like, I mean, earlier on you were talking about how the, the whole thing of ancestry and descendants and whatnot. If you go to the book of Chronicles, just Chronicles, I mean, it's, under, it's in other places in the Bible. The entire first like five chapters of Chronicles is just talking about descendants. It's just mm. talking about this one was a child of this one who was a child of that one who was then the child of that one and that one bore sons and that one did this and that one did that. And that's what my relationship is with my ancestors. It's understanding that before me, there was my parents, Chimburun and Ashumani. Before that, there were my grandparents, Ereran and Murayeni, Movai Dana Wachitangoni. Before that, there were their parents, you know? And that's how I paint the picture for myself. And I'm fulfilled, guys. I don't need anybody else to make it make sense for them because... If my light disturbs you, that's on you. I'm in Genindau. This is where my people want me to be, and they are protecting me through that journey of learning and unlearning for myself. I would deep I, I, you know, and 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 I've learned to to also because I have such. I am grateful to my ancestors for the work that I've been called to do because I am, I leave feeling healed. As a healer, these conversations fill my cup because I have more capacity to then give to others. Oh. And, and you have been such a gift and you, you have shed so much light, Ulsani, in terms of what was powerful for me is that we go through these journeys, not necessarily to be healers, 
a, a, for the world, but to heal thyself. What has okay. healed within you? You know, what has uh, healed within you? What shifted the minute you took this journey of understanding your identity, uh, understanding your culture? What other things? You know, if you could say this and this shifted, and this is where yeah. I am now, what would those things be? Sure. I, th I think one of the biggest things was definitely I had an understanding of why certain things were removed from my life. And not only an understanding, but I found a great peace in it. A great peace. It made sense. I was just like, okay. I mean, I cried ugly tears. I was on the bathroom for like, hey, hey, why did you take this friend away? Why did you take that relationship away? What? But in hindsight, I got it. I got that I had played my role in their lives. They had played a role in mine. But I also understood that, you know, our ancestors are also, they get to a place where they're a little selfish and kind of like want you to themselves so that they can do the pruning and they can talk directly to you. And when you have too many friends, now you're trying to share this experience with too many people and then you're listening to too many opinions and whatnot. And sometimes that's why they remove things from your lives. You know, when, co when the whole pandemic started, I tweeted and I said, so many of us are going to experience healing on a level we've never seen before and breakthrough because you're physically being removed from things that you didn't even know were making you sick. Ooh. You yeah. didn't even know that it was happening. But now because you've physically been taken out of that space, you might find like Wahema and the Uhema with a freedom that you never experienced before. The lady at work every day, she's just coming to say hi to you. That high is filled with something else. There's an agenda behind it and the closeness that she wants to have with you. But because now you are at home in your space, it's like th there's a cleansing. There's a, there's a newness that is coming. And if we just focused ourselves on the good that is being done, I think a lot of us would find this time in as difficult as it is. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't acknowledge that there's loss of income and loss of livelihoods. But I believe that there's also a huge spiritual shift that is happening. And if you don't use this time to tap into that, you might not come out on the other side of this as great as some of the rest of us will come out because we are understanding what it is a time for. You know, we are understanding that now instead of being in a meeting at 12 o'clock, you now block out your diary at 12 o'clock because you want to pray. And you say, I'm not available. You can phone me at 12.30. But had we not been in the space of quietness and forcing ourselves to be still, things like that would not have been happening. Some of us are finding ourselves in a place where we're reading more. And I don't believe that you read things by accident. Just like you're not watching the stream by accident. There is a reason that God and your ancestors have put you in this place for such a time as this to hear something that is going to be said here that is either going to ignite something in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind that is going to ultimately changed the direction and the trajectory of where you were headed. Like there's a reason that you're here. And so the things that you are opening your mind to, the things that you're opening your spirit to are just so key and so important. And there is a reason that they happen. And when I started opening myself up to learning more about my culture and learning more about my ancestors, my mind was even opened up to learning more about us as a black people and understanding the, the struggles that we've been through. And one of the big things that changed as well is that I was able to empathize better with other people. I was able to understand better. So in my family, as young as I am, I usually take and play up the role of healer or I'm the peacemaker. So I've always been the person that I think, I mean, I fall in a generation where I have the understanding of the older people and where they're coming from, but I also understand where my younger cousins are coming from. And so when they're throwing tantrums and things like that, I'm able to step in and say to my aunts or my uncles to be like, have you actually thought about why it is that she's reacting like that? Because a child doesn't just J out of the blue. There's a call for attention or something that needs to be done in order for her to, you know, jump this gap or whatever it is that she's going through. And so I, I've really grown more into that role with a greater understanding and I don't think that would have happened. You know, we are not being to place because there's a fine line between to die, 
in order in order for it whatever it is that you're building building in yourself in your business in your relationships in your friendships i have a saying that says in order for it to stand tall it needs to stand firm and so many of us are in a rush to build this way but you're not building this you're not standing on a strong foundation and if you're going to build on a shaky ground don't be surprised when eventually you build your 22 floor and then it falls over because the foundation was never strong the foundation was never right the foundation never had a strong sense of knowing where it's going another big thing that changed for me um on this journey was i know what i want and i know what i don't want and i'm very clear about it and i'm unapologetic about it either you know um i a lot of people always ask me so how are you still standing in this business after like 23 years why haven't you done that and gone this way and i'm just like guys mina mina ne ni tanda the way that i am with the things that i have and i know that that strong sense of self comes from a strong sense of my people walking with me protecting me guiding me uh kuzaring me when i need to be kuzad because it doesn't mean that i'm always getting it right you know but i understand that i still drive my first car my little polo in tanda ganz and oh patience one but i know that there are things that i'm working towards and i know that those doors will be unlocked for me at a time which is correct but i'm not going to sacrifice who i am and try and keep up with instagram and keep up with you know you're a celebrity you should be driving this kind of car i'm sorry i don't need to do all of that i am very firm in who i am i stand very firm in understanding that i'm where i'm supposed to be it doesn't mean that i don't want other nice things who shall i will work hard for those things and i will get those things you know my time will come so it, a lot has changed for me and and i and i know that it has been a lot to do with the fact that i've given in to the fact that and having it or you know you walk with an army of ancestors and that's why you're so grounded in yourself because yeah. i always say to people that i love the whole idea of being grounded because once you're grounded and deeply rooted you're not going to be blown by where the wind you are you are going to be a, a trend setter not a trend follower because you'll yeah. always be setting according to what you've been called to do by your people because you are here to serve and you are of service in the way in which you are doing things you have served a magnificent purpose today because what this this lockdown has done is helping us to look within because yeah. we are not being delayed but we are being redirected you know we are not being uh, things are not falling apart but they're falling into place because into the place. old has to die we are in a season of old ways of being dying because it only served a few i can relate to so many things i like yo ganti na macha ke tangaga right and i had to also and and i also had to in my midst of 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 my deep emotions as i and peel layers of wounds i have been healed i don't have a a shopping mall to run to and shop myself out of things because mean for me exactly. shopping is my therapy for other people it's alcohol for other people is 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 um it's 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 other things and because we are not having access to those things i think what by dimu eh uh, dimu dimu are saying to us is that we need to be meaningful we need to live meaningful lives we need to be purposeful and not everyone has been seeking with the you know i think with the rise of social media everybody now wanted to be famous everybody yeah. wanted to be an actress everyone wanted to be a celebrity sangoma everybody forgot why they are here and now that we are pausing and being paved and being replenished and being cleansed of false ideas of ourselves and if you don't take this time to invest in yourself in the most positive ways because i i don't follow people who don't inspire me to be my great self i don't follow people because i want to be like them i follow them because they feed into who i'm wanting to be for myself and that's the message that people need to get follow people who are influencing you who are putting you back into spirit which is inspiration to be your higher self because there's two there there, there can never be a best version of a a copy a copycat a copycat they can never know. 
they can never be they can we, we know we let's not promote unnecessary brands here but we all know we spoke of castle millstone because we once were on a project and they compensated us you know they gave us they gave us what was due to us to do the work and um, but yeah. we know that they, when once you know the original so there can be one original with Sani Ravele, there can only be one original Coco Dineo. Let us inspire you to be your greatest self because each and every one of us are placed in these times where we are facing coronavirus because we need to be shifting something in the ether. Consciousness yeah. has to shift because the world has to be made better. We need to be more compassionate. We need to be more loving. We need to find synergy than segregation. We need to find alignment instead of integration. So there's a lot happening. Spirit has called us. So if you don't do the work within, you'll come it out. It won't show. No, because uh, either always... you're going to go. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Coco. Either you're um, going to go. I, 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 yeah, I'm saying it's either you're going to come out here shaped up or shaped out. Yeah. Right? You know, I, I believe that, with, with, yes. that there's a, I always say there's a fine line between inspiration and envy. And what the world of social media has done is that instead of us waiting until Suyele Makaya to hear Ubutu Ubanu Shatenobani, who bought a car, it now it's instant. We see it in a picture that, oh, this one got married, this one bought this car and yes. whatnot. And we become so envious of what it is that is happening in other people's lives. And we fail to stop and take a moment to be like, you do understand that this person is also just showing you a free space. They're showing you the best part of their story. They're not even telling you how they got that car. You don't know yeah. that others are feeding. What do they say? They're living with snakes there that they are feeding in order for them to have the cars and the things that they have, right? <laughs> and you don't know um, other things that they're doing to have the things that they have. And so whilst it's not, it's not a bad thing to, to inspire to have things that other people have, but you need to understand that you need to work for them in your own way. Otherwise, that's when you're going to be willing to do the things that other people will never do to get the things that you don't have. Because now you're also upegiskati. You're comparing yourself on things that you shouldn't be doing. And I, I live on three pillars. You know, when my dad died, I had an awakening of he died doing something that he loved. And I started asking myself, am I doing what I love? And as I moved through corporate space, I understood that my purpose in life is to use the platform that I have as an MC, as a speaker, as a TV presenter, as a radio presenter, to positively impact people's lives. And so I built the three pillars for myself of purpose, power, and impact. And I think one thing we forget as just people is that you're a brand in yourself as a human. So what do you stand on? What are your pillars? Like, if somebody had to say, Goko Dineo is Coke, what does Goko Dineo stand for? And that's mm. what I would say you need to be using this time to ask yourself as as Utemba Baloi, Lao Shala Kona, watching the stream right now, if somebody had to ask you, what do you stand for? What is it that you want to do out of life? Are you able to answer it in a succinct manner that is very clear? Because for me, I know I'm built on purpose, power, and impact. And therefore, when anybody comes into my life, if you don't tick any one of those things, whether you're a person, a brand, a job opportunity, I'm not interested. And I can easily say no very quickly because I know that you don't align with those things. But we don't want to tap into those conversations. We're scared to tap into ourselves and look at the ugly in us and name the ugly. I want and us name to, the things that hurt it's you. It's like 30 seconds left. <laughs> We're going to start another one afterwards. <laughs> We're going to start. That's what I just wanted to let people know because I think you are giving us meaning how to actually move in the direction of people's, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and being impactful. So I'm saying that if it cuts off, guys, don't disappear. We're going to have another 10 minutes to wrap up. An hour on Instagram doesn't feel enough. It's not enough. So let's wrap this up in the next 10 minutes. So I, let me actually end it here so that it doesn't cut us off. And then we come back and then you give us 10 minutes of those three words that you live by because I think this is how we actually self-discover ourselves to navigate around our identities. So we'll be back, guys, just now, now, now. <laughs> Oh, 
Something right, uh -huh. the logos in the space because uh, most of them grew up knowing you, and all of them said we've had people speak. Mara, ha, mufumagazi ravele is deep. They were always like, oh, 
yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I even when I do talks, you know, uh, I always say to people, I don't want to talk and then people keep quiet. It's not in us. We mm. are, I think in our essence, as much as we have colonization and other things that have taken us away from certain things that are our essence, we are for each other. We, we are. are celebrating each other. We are for affirming each other. And that's mm. why we do the, mm, the us, the wow, the yo, the e. Because those things. We are affirming. We are affirming, and, and, and you can't rehearse it. You can't practice it. It's when you are triggered into a, a space of greatness and you want to shed that light of greatness to the other. But let's get into the three things that you were telling about. Give us the magic. We're here. We're so listening. Me, I, 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 Trademark, by the way, because I'm a serious businesswoman, because my ancestors didn't raise no fool. <laughs> <laughs> and you plus you from royalty. Ah, and from both sides, not even one side, you know, I'm just like fully dipped, you know, fully dipped. <laughs> um, purpose is about, uh, so how the three words work together, purpose, power, and impact is, I believe that my truest and highest calling is to help people discover their purpose, harness its power, and then I'm going to sit back and watch the impact. And the, the first part about purpose is just being intentional about the things that you do, the people that you with, the people you allow into your space, the guys that you have sex with, the guys you allow into your life, the guys you allow to date you, the, you know, intentional, understand the purpose that you're trying to do with whatever you do, the work you're in, the people that you're around, because if you don't align to that, you know, my grand Kokona, I mean, I used to say, Holy way, Mananga. One of us, but you can't have a chapisi, but don't you shanga flavor on your fair of a nipa? Which is essentially our fun was against the chapis. If flavor must say, Penny, they're going to spit you out. Right? And so that's where it's important to just understand purpose in all aspects of your life. Because so often when we speak about purpose, we think it's just about spiritual purpose. But mm -hmm. it's purpose in everything that you do. And purpose can come in different ways, shapes, and forms. It doesn't have to be one thing. And so I'd really encourage people to just discover what your purpose is. And also understand that we all have purpose. Everybody has it. And we might not all be able to articulate it as well as others, but we all have it. In your purpose as being a mother, your purpose is, be is perhaps to be a nurturer. And being a nurturer won't just happen in your home, but maybe in your workspace as well, you know? Maybe your purpose is to teach, but all of us have it. Our problem is that we're too busy looking at our person next door and too busy admiring and being envious and jealous of what others have that you don't take enough time to find what's in, within you. And it's mm. there. It's just waiting for you to tap into it realize it and bring it to fruition and so that leads us to the second power the second pillar which is power because once you've discovered your purpose you need to harness its power you need to harness the power that you have to touch and impact people's lives my power and my ability is speaking so is yours Goko. another person is singing another person is cooking another person is being able to do events and do decor another person is being able to design and, you know, like we all have power within all of us and it's so connected to our purpose. And once mm. you bring those two together, you can sit back and you can watch the impact because the moment you're living a purposeful life, a powerful life, the impact that you will have not only on yourself, your immediate circle, but on people around you will be extreme. Like to the point where you walk into a room and people are just like, it's just this thing like, and that's the impact that you're having with people to the point where you even have it without even speaking without opening your mouth you know and so that those are my three pillars it doesn't have to be your three but that's how the three work for me and they have guided me in everything that i do and that's why even when the losses come i can understand them i can appreciate them i'm not saying they're not going to hurt the losses will hurt you. The no's will hurt you. But you will be able to get to the point of acceptance a lot quicker than you are right now. Because so many of you, you are busy. Hey, Maramina, this is a family. I don't candy. Bang, Huh. 
But if you had that relationship and tapped into that higher self of you, of you and your people, you would get to a place of understanding so much quicker. Um, the other thing that I really encourage people to do is just be honest with yourself. Yes, can we one? So many people are scared to be by themselves. And I always say, that's a problem. If you can't sit alone and be with your thoughts, your ugly thoughts, your scary thoughts, your thoughts of doubt, failure, all these things, that means I was a man's baggy. That's, mm. that's essentially what you're saying because you're not alone there are people around you and wanting to speak to you and elevate you to the next level but you're not tapping into it and so when you do find yourself in a place where things are difficult there's no reason why you shouldn't go out there and get help and I think help of the modern day has changed so whilst I can go to a psychologist which I've gone to, to therapy before and I swear by it I can now also tap into Ugpasha. I can now tap into understanding why do we, why is Palaza? Why do we do it? And understanding that I can tap into my Bible. So all I've really done is that I've expanded my network and reach of being able to heal myself and help myself and move into that space of it doesn't have to be this or that. I can do this and that. I can go and see a psychologist. I can go and consult with a Sangoma and I can go to church and praise and worship like I'm crazy and all those things heal me. All those things help me. And it all makes sense to me. And that's all it needs to make sense to because if you're going to go out there and trying to please people and align with people, you're not going to get to that next level that your people might be calling you to because they have called you for such a time as this. You're the change. You're the unlocker. And maybe psychology and therapy hasn't worked for you because actually it's something as deep as you're using the wrong family surname. But if you don't go and consult with the people that know these things and can see these things, you're not going to find your source of healing. And it's sad that our families and black people are so quick to uh, believe in mediums. What is a medium? A medium is a person who has a gift to tap into the spiritual realm to bring you a message. So when I go and see a Sangoma, what am I doing? But it's fine. We can watch Crossing Over with John Edward and say, oh, it's such a nice show, it's such a nice thing. But when we see Oh Coco Dina, we're like, hmm, give out Satanism. And you know, I, I, I like what you said also, but it's the power of the P. The power of the, the P. Yeah. You know, because when we're being purposeful, we can be powerful in our actions that can create impact then popularity comes afterwards because yeah. the P which you are trying to push is popularity, which makes us lose track of our purpose. I always say, stay in your lane. You will slay in it because once you own your own purpose, because each and every one of us are here. And even if your purpose is to support me as the frontliner, it is impactful because I always say I've got a lot of people supporting my work behind the scenes yeah. that will, you'll never get to see in front of the camera, but they've understood what their purpose is. And they understand that me shining my own star, they're holding space for me. They are that sky that's holding space for me because without the, the, the dark cloud, without the invisible, uh, my visibility will not be shining. Mm -hmm. Whether that's my Everybody family. wants to shine. Yeah, but we, as, 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 as also as the, there's, the, there can only be so many stars in the galaxy, right? But also the stars are shining in their own little corners. They're not shining over yeah. each other. They're not stamping on each other to try to steal the other person's light to say, hey, hold up, you know? So it's, 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 it's very important uh, for us to understand those things. I think this has been an enriching conversation the, the enriching ones city is of we season three. <laughs> in production in is season on two and three. You know? So yeah. we on season two, we're gonna do season three because we need to continuously having purposeful conversations that can be powerful and impactful. And we That's need to also powerful. understand Guti. In doing so, we are in alignment. I said you said I'm a speaker. I know Guti, I'm gifted with words. Because that's what I've been gifted with. But my purpose is to awaken Africa's children to their true identity so they can return to the sacred womb of Mother Africa where all forms of life began. Because I say that a people uh, who are not deeply rooted with their ancestors 
um, are like trees that have no ability to, to, to thrive. You can't bear fruit. And I love that whole aspect when you spoke about being grounded. So this has been a purposeful conversation, a powerful one that has created deeper impact for me as well, listening to this gem and this gold that you are. Uh, it's, it's, you have enriched me. You have filled my cup as a healer because I had a long day. I was in a meeting the whole day and then clearly like when I'm breathing in and meditating before I go into the session, but I could feel like my body was tired because I've been amongst mm -hmm. people and so many energies. And when we started to speak, you healed me. Healers don't oh, always so have to carry a title. They don't and, always and, have to carry a title. And that's, and that's it, Coco. You know, it's in whatever space, in whatever thing that you're doing, we all have the ability to touch other people's lives. And, you know, I'm reading this book at the moment, um, Coconut, and Today, I was trying to plan, like, the points I'm going to have in this conversation with you. Because I was like, yo, Coco's been talking to some intelligent people. Yes, I mustn't get there and be the one that's like, yo, Nelly Misakai, why are they so <laughs> But the words just weren't coming. There was no thing, right? And then I was reading, and it brought me to this page, and I was like, oh, my word, this is exactly it. And it, it's a conversation that a child is having with her mother. And I was like, this is exactly where we find ourselves as millennials and I'm a 2000. So she says, Mama, what did we believe in before the missionaries came? Badimu. Badimu? Yes, Ufilwe. Badimu. Badimu and what else? What else did we believe, Mama? Just Badimu, Ufilwe. But surely we had our own traditional rites, a name for our God, a form of worship. Whatever happened to that? I don't know, Ufilwe. Tepo says they, the missionaries, tricked us, Mama. Or doesn't it matter? No, it doesn't matter, Ufilwe. Do you think Bokoku would know? Maybe Ufilwe. Or was it before their time? When did the missionaries come? I don't know, Ufilwe. Good night. Okay, Mama, good night. We need to be the Ufilwe in the story. Each and every single one of us young people need to be an Ufilwe. Ufilwe is questioning. She is prodding. She is wanting to have a deeper understanding so that she can have greater enlightenment to be able to make the decisions for herself and be able to pass that light on to others. There is nothing wrong with you wanting to know more about your culture. There is nothing wrong with you wanting to try something different that your family might have not done. You won't always go with the support of all of them. But trust me when I say your ancestors don't just bring you to a place to drop you. They'll never do that. If there's one thing that any Gogo you'll ever consult with will tell you is that your, your, your angels are always with you. Always, 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 always. They'll never leave you. And Dozzy timing is perfect timing. Sometimes we are chasing for things that by the time we have them will be 20, 20 feet high and then they will collapse. I always say yeah. to people, Dozzy timing is perfect timing. When everything aligns, that's when we become purposeful, powerful, and we create impact. And impact, this is one yeah. of the things we did it at the right time. I am looking forward to having another conversation with you. People are saying, Yes, guys, this is season two. We had season one. We are in season two. And thank you for being the, the first uh, guest to come on season two. On season we two. Have, <laughs> season two. We have to create our own platforms and we can't wait. Mm -hmm. We have to be the key feelers of how, mama, how can I do it? Uh, I say, what can I do? People don't also know this about me. Every single thing I do, I ask my ancestors for guidance. And I ask them to so I always ask because I want to be spirit led because I am human and I'm not mm -hmm. immune to human faults because ego can edge me out of this calling and this purpose and I can lose power yeah. and impact. So I want people to also say the other powerful piece is Pasha. Pray, pray, they will push up for you because once <laughs> yeah. you pass up and you pray, they shall push up for you for you to find your purpose that can be powerful and, and that can be impactful because that's so, very so before, important. Before you go, can I ask you to ask for something from your doses? You were talking about ego and asking your doses for a, a way and direction, and I think as we move forward and ask ourselves the questions, so. What do we do next? How do we learn more? Is I really want to challenge the Coco people, you know, your fraternity and your, your space that it's important for you guys to unite. 
and to get to a place where you are accessible via things like digital and the same way that I can go and Google therapist in the East, I must be able to go and find a directory of or go for that I can go and consult with because we all know that it's so easy to be taken for a ride out there. And that perhaps is one of the barriers of entry to people wanting to go to learn more because they're so scared of what could happen out there. They're so scared to encounter a person who will do the wrong things to them. You know what I mean? And so that's one of the challenges that we find as young people, as millennials, as Ama 2000, that we want to learn, we want to, but as I go to know Koko, Koko Amaniti. And the truth be told, Koko Tineo can't consult for all of us. She can't help all of us. And so it's, I, I challenge the fraternity that you're a part of to really work together and get to a place where we can access you as easily as I can say, you want an ENT specialist. There, this is the person, you know. So that's the challenge to us, your people, <laughs> to advise and help you on how we work towards that. <laughs> well, we'll speak offline. Uh, if 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 <laughs> if people don't believe they are connected and gifted, uh, what you've just said is speaking into something in the pipeline. Uh, but I also want to say because it's not only about. I want to challenge all of us who are watching this that to understand that sometimes you are unable to do the work uh, and, and meet you guys at the level in which you are at because you are also not willing to invest in us. Mm, so people come true. and question how we do things, why we charge what we charge, but you want a Skype consultation. It data it in him doing that time. You understand? You want me to sit and answer a hundred of your questions from Beth post-consultation. Yeah. You want me to interpret your dreams. We need to be able to invest in our practitioners. So it's, 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 it's both ways, you know. And I, I also agree. want to challenge us for we can't be the it and the know it all. I've got limitations. You're right. You know. Mm. And that's why as an institute we work with other practitioners and we'll say no, we've got somebody so way too. And before the institute I used to have other healers that I work with but I've also realized that I, I want to build people of integrity because there mm. is a lot of us online, but it's those, I will give you everything. No healer is a master at everything. They are jack of all trades, meaning they will not lead you anywhere. They'll be a They'll master take you of everywhere. Yeah. You know, so it's very important not, not to mislead people because I do have people who come in on the streams and I do have fellow colleagues and they start me, me misleading people and they start saying, coming to me, I'll do this because Songke, we want to be everything but not ourselves. We want to be everything else but not ourselves. So there's a lot of work and it's not only for the healers. The, when we spoke with Mkurun Singh on Friday, decolonization of the mind. Because once your mind is decolonized, you can be deeply in tune and you can be discerning yes. as a patient as well. Because for you who come to us, you need to be discerning. If you are coming to me and me and your people are not in sync, don't sign Ooh. up for further things. Just say thank you. The same way you can go to Dr. Svanbani and Dr. Svanbani and Dr. And Dr. Svanbani for a second opinion. and be yes. okay with that, you know. So the, 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 there's those things. And also don't come thinking that we can offer everything. You want a promotion. You want that guy to marry you because it's been long. Uh, you want yeah. your mtagati and the neighborhood <laughs> gone. You understand? Because, and, and, and people also come to us when everything is gone. And we have to be the Lord. Bring everything together. Because people Thanks. need to understand. This is something that's important. People need to understand about us. We are intermediaries. We are facilitators. So I say this, and I said this at a TED Talk. I said, it doesn't matter how powerful we are as healers. It doesn't matter how purposeful we are as healers. It doesn't matter how if powerful you don't my do the work. Are or my mm. ancestors are, right? But if your level of readiness does not match the level of your aspirations, change ain't going to happen. No you amount know? of mess is going to fix it. And that's what I love about psychology. Me and you, same WhatsApp group. Because the gift one can gift themselves is to work on themselves for a betterment of themselves. You can never be purposeful and, and powerful and impactful if you don't know thyself. Because stream like everybody else. Then now you to Palama articles, you go write articles. Uzo in the Ama Ama workshop, you will never because you are you need to work on yourself and all of us are wounded 
and all of us carry baggage and all yeah. of us carry level of toxicity the more you can unpeel an onion layer we have only onion is more unpeel the more yeah. you unpeel that onion layer i said it doesn't you know it doesn't create an agitation the first few will be harder but the more you get there the more you start it starts to easy up the onion and you start to fall in love with it the fragrance so fall in love with yourself because that's another conversation i want to have with the woman that trained me in coaching how to fall in love with ourselves i'm beautiful i love myself i used to do that when i was a storyteller with the kids and i would say look like it's a mirror and i'm like i love my big nose i love my hair and the energy would shift because a lot of us are not able to be purposeful in our life because we don't love who we are we don't yeah, want to be ourselves we're also afraid to face the ugly and i think that comes with a lot of black families where secrecy is literally what is killing a lot of us you know this thing of haribuika we don't talk about what happened here we don't talk about this one we're lying to children we're not telling them the truth about who their father really is when you know exactly who the father is and so you wonder when a person is just you know they they can't love themselves because they also don't know themselves and they also lost out there in seeking so i think it's also very important that it it's a group work you know unfortunately the project of self is also a group project in certain things and you need to go out there and and face that ugly you need to go out there and face the things that hurt you and name the pain that hurt you and you'll never know about those things unless you go and consult like goko said either with a with a, a traditional healer or you go and consult with your psychologist or you have the fortune of meeting someone who does both ne yeah. and there's many of us who can shop there are many who shop on visa both. consultation what's my visa <laughs> consultation it's in visa consultation you know because yeah. i i you know well, because for me it's important to connect to you as a person before i connect to your ancestors because yeah. i can tell you the most deepest richest information about your ancestry and what your ancestors need but if the person in you is out of touch with themselves they won't hear me that's it you know that's it so there's sometimes where people come and i go into you and i go into you then i after i go into you then let's go to the people who you work with because once the you is, is centered and the you is grounded because i'm going to get you on the spirit hey in in and each yeah. person is not also each person requires different intervention when you make a figure that pay they want you to start hitting them with the problems you know and this is what it is <laughs> because that's what it means being gifted is the ability to tune in to a need that is at hand gifted that's is an ability to tune in uh, to the need at hand and needs are different so it's been amazing i mean now it's not cool the whole night you are coming back and we could hey <laughs> you're spina okay my real last word my real last yama yeah, last i'm going to say to everybody watching self work is hard work but it's worth it work it will always 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 be worth it you will awaken to a self that brings you so much joy and peace and not happiness because happiness is a fleeting emotion that's as a result of things that are happening around you but joy and to be content like to be at peace with what you have that takes a lot of self work and it will be hard it will be ugly it will kala marozo uzo uzo ba right People will be asking you to please come back. Go bomb pedi goosebumps stu. Please say your stagazelo and post for us. We're not going to see. We just want to hear your stagazelo. Charm us. Just in there. We chant us. Yeah. Ah, we. Then people would say ni, would say ni ravele, mduru wa mateketeke, mduru wa bela la mambo wa denga. Wabo sema teketeke bo thoma, bo ndwa miyomba bo thoma, bo vele, bo nganga, bo ndwa khulu. Wondwa miyomba babili ndi mdhuru wa nesengani wa daba na shikulisa ka sitangu shikulisa ka maluleke ndi mdhuru wa chibaso wa sikwari ndi mdhuru wa rambiana ndi mdhuru wa macheketeke macheketeke wola mbudzi ya dzimavala ndandu ndi tsavela koromo ne dzinalanga ndi pfumo wa pfumo wa wa ofa ndala mapfumo ndi ranga ndothe ah ah ndo lebuwa wow thank you koko uri mwane nga manda thank you wow Wow. Ooh, that's leadership, guys. 
there we are oh this is leadership this is amazing um i'll be back guys in the next few minutes just doing what we normally do where you can make the request you're making i'm going to end this one and then i'm going to do a live stream this is one on ones with coco uh, i'm going to have to move out of the space so that you know people who are helping me hold the space can also be excused uh love and light i will see you in a bit Mwah.